My name is Maria Bauza, and in this video, we present our work on tactile object post estimation from the first touch with geometric contact rendering. Daily, millions of humans assemble objects by hand, even when those are rigid and well known. If we want robots to achieve the same dexterity, we must provide them with accurate perception. In this work, we aim at improving perception by looking at the problem of tactile post localization, where when an object touches a tactile sensor, we need to predict from its output the pose of the object. Previous work on this problem has either used tactile as a complement to a vision system or required a lot of data collection, which is often expensive and unpractical. Instead, in this work, we aim at the problem of solving tactile localization from the first touch. This means that we do not require any previous contact with the object or an external perception system. Instead, what we do is we assume that we know the object's models beforehand. Note that this is a category that fits many industrial settings. Given the object model, we simulate a dense set of contact poses. These are poses where the object and the sensor would be in contact without penetration. From those poses, we simulate contact shapes, which we represent as depth images that measure how much penetration the object is exerting on the sensor. Now, in the real world, we receive tactile images from the sensor, and we use a train neural network to estimate the contact shape, the contact that is made on the sensor. Now, we have a way to go from tactile images to estimate the contact shape, which is object independent because contact shape does not depend on the type of object that is contacting the sensor. We also have a way that given the object model, we can simulate contact shape. This is object dependent, but it's over in simulation, meaning that we do not need to have any real contact with the object before being able to compute any of the simulated contact shapes. Now that we have a way to estimate contact shapes and a way to simulate them, the next question is, can we find the one on the simulated set that matches well the one that is given for the sensor? For that, we use tactile image matching, which is a way to give a probability of each of the pre-computed simulated contact shapes to be the closest one to the one that comes from the sensor. To train tactile image matching, we use the dense set of poses and contact shapes that we have pre-computed in simulation. We generate a random contact pose and its contact shape, and find which one is the closest one to this new one from the dense set of contact shapes. Then we can generate a label that says how likely each of those elements is to be the closest one in pose distance to the random contact pose. We encode them using the ResNet50, and from that, we can compute encodings of each of the contact shapes, that then we can compute the distance between them, and with a softmax, end up with a predicted likelihood of each of those elements in the grid being the closest one to the random pose that we generated. Finally, once we have those pose distributions, we can do a next step where we take into account that our contact shapes are actually depth images that can be transformed into point clouds. Therefore, we can use restriction techniques to locally improve the transformation for the pose of the object with respect to the sensor. After all, we get pose distributions that we can use in several settings, including adding other constraints from external perception systems or multiple contacts. In this video, we show qualitative results on our pose estimation from a single image. With computer results for six more objects, as you can see in the next slide. We also computed quantitative results for different objects. Here you can see an example where in black we mark the expected error if you were to select a random pose, and in red the error if you were to match a given local shape with the best pose, the closest one in the given set. Now what we can do is plot the distribution of errors if you were to take the best match, and as you can see there is multimodality because different object poses can lead into the same or very similar contact shape. If you do registration, you get a bit more focused distributions, but the clear improvement comes when you look at the distributions and you select the best out of them. Now you can see how the multimodality is gone, and that's because often when you consider multiple poses, it's likely that the contact shapes that could come from several poses, actually all those poses have been included in the set of them. We compute these results for four different objects. And again, you can see how multimodality happens often. And again, that's because there is this non-uniqueness where different poses can end up into very similar or even the same contact shape. Now we show results for multiple contacts. In this case, what you can see is that if you only consider the kinematics of the sensors, you don't see much improvement. Well, if instead you also take into account the contact shapes, then the more contacts that you are, the more information that you gain, and that is enough to clearly reduce the error. We compute the results for the other four objects. And you can clearly see that with our approach, adding multiple contacts has a clear effect on our pose estimation. In summary, we have presented an approach that given the object model, can provide accurate tactile localization for a given object. We do that by providing pose distributions that are single estimates to account for those poses that can result in very similar contact shapes. Moreover, we do that without requiring any prior data and allowing our model to be combined with external constraints like multi-contacts. 